you don't like to read, you'll still read for a purpose. If you're, me- if you're meant to do something at the end of that reading and you're maybe more analytical versus uh, introspective, then you'll still come out with a product that is at expectation. If you're a good reader, you might take it in another direction, you might go farther with it, but in the, in the long run where the expectation is to complete a reading ca- class or an essay or performance assessment of any kind, it doesn't matter what kind of reader you are, just that you can read and comprehend. Hmm. Stories just by themselves are different types of selection. So there's a biography about a war veteran, there's a poem that has all of the aspects of figurative language in it, there's um, a mystery, there's um, one piece that we read towards the beginning was about dolphins and how they lived and that's connected to science and social studies in so many different ways. So it hits cross-curricular, um, it hits subjects in a cross-curricular way all the time as long as you stop and realize that and connect it when you're in the middle of the class. Great. And I know that's what we're, when we're evaluated, it does it does show up on that evaluation. Is there a connection to a different subject? So if you're, if you're being aware of that and if you're doing your job as a teacher, you can connect any of these stories to another subject. For collections, there are two parts of it. There's what I call the mini textbook because it's smaller than any other textbook and it's cute and it's easier to, man- to manage. And then there's the close reader, which is... Um, acts more like a workbook where you can write inside it and highlight or or whatever. They both work with the one, each collection at a time, they have different stories in them. I always start with the overview of all of the stories in the teacher manual. I know that in SIS it shows what the map is and there are expectations with target vocabulary and objectives or pick the objective that works with the with the story or the standard and then I use that to pick what I want to use in the classroom because I know my students at this point so I make sure that what I'm picking is going to be interesting to them or at least worth the reading and I work I work backwards I work with the end in mind so I know that at the end of every collection there are two performance tasks to complete and we pick one I pick which one I think that my students are ready for or that I know will be teachable within what I'm reading. So for for instance, for collection five, I picked the performance assessment that was the opinion essay. And knowing I was going to have to use the stories to make that happen, one of the stories, the prompt that goes along with the opinion essay is Paul Revere's Ride. So in Collection 5, Paul Revere's ride happens to be the anchor text, which works because you expect us to do the anchor text. Um, And then I work from there. So I know I have to hit at least that one. And then I use the close reader because the students really like to use that. And they've told me before that they enjoy it. And so if they're enjoying what they're learning, then it makes my job easier. So the stories that I picked for Collection 5 to use I I figure it's going to take me at least a month, if not maybe a month and a couple weeks, depending on how fast or slow we work. Um, I picked Paul Revere's Ride as the anchor text. I picked both close reader stories, the autobiography and essay about Wilma Mankiller. She was um, uh, an Indian, a Native American chief. And then I picked the Marie Curie poem, uh, The Light Out of the Light. And then I went along with the poem of Paul Revere's Ride. I did another poem. I did The Road Not Taken in the, anchor te- in the mini textbook as well. I used a second anchor text. I used the memoirs and biography of Colin Powell. And it turns out that it worked out that we did it on his birthday. So it was kind of a nice little tie in there. Um, but I noticed some of, I read each story. I definitely do that before I read with the children because I don't want to come across something that I'm not familiar with. But I knew reading ahead of everything that the Colin Powell stories were more challenging. So usually if it's longer or more challenging, and I know that I need the story because of what's coming later with the performance assessment, if I need them to read it and to have some idea and to talk about it in general as a class, I change how I teach that. So instead of doing it whole class with me leading and them kind of working off of me or within the close reader and we work on it together, 
Um, I usually set up something that's harder with I call a buddy read. I make sure I make a student have a partner. They have the questions that come from the HMH website that I've gone through and it's guided re guided questions by reading. And I print that off and I have them use that to work through the story. So that way there's a check process the entire time. So I know going into it that I'm going to use all of these stories and so then I create my lessons on top of that. I usually start with the close reader because it's easier, it's less challenging, plus it is it lends itself to differentiation and title students so easily. The collection or the close reader has questions in each of the in each of the parts of the story it says in blue what you're supposed to look for as you're reading along so I know as a teacher what to make sure I hit on and then I also have my title students can focus more on something tangible versus something that's a little bit more higher level thinking which other students can get to as well so I make sure to hit all, all levels and then the discussion that we do about each story usually pulls in the lower students up at least to mid-range with those with the average performers and the higher level performers usually rise to the challenge and help create a discussion so it ends up working out the vocabulary I pull out vocabulary and I use the vocabulary from each of the stories each story and its own vocabulary I actually print it out and I tape it straight into their notebook so they don't have to do a as much work doesn't make it as overwhelming to them. So the day that we get vocabulary, I go over each word. We, you know, read, repeat. I say the definition. I emphasize it in a sentence, and then the students go off and practice on their own, and they come up with their own sentences with context clues using the vocabulary. The vocabulary comes up again when we read. So if we're using the close reader and the close reader has the word pulled off to the side, it's an easy annotation where we can find the context clues and we're connecting straight to the definition and so the words are constantly coming up. If we're in the um, mini textbook, I point it out as they come up, they're usually highlighted or off to the side with the definition and knowing it's there helps make the rest of the story make sense. So they're never forgotten. I do quiz them at the end of the week on vocabulary and spelling to kind of meet that goal of spelling words properly and all of that. But I don't put as much emphasis on it. I put more emphasis on the writing. So at the end of each close reader text, there's a short response, which acts like a mini essay. It's a small version of, of the bigger overall question that the performance task is going to eventually ask. In the anchor text, I use the questions that come from that handout that I can get from the website or the questions that are provided in the textbook that kind of guide the teacher into how to create a discussion or ask questions just in general, I use those or I turn them into questions. Through SIS you put up an essential question which usually tracks with what I feel like I'm going towards with the stories and how I want the stories to all connect. And I make sure that the essential question is always on the board. I make sure that my objective for each day is specific to the day. Um, for instance, today when we were reading the Medusa poem, we had read Medusa's head, the story right before that. They had to um, figure out what the message of the story was today. Like what was the point of the story? And that tied directly into the question, the essential question of what do we value? So I find that by using those Questioning techniques or just having the questions up keeps all of those in mind every single class because I know in the end they're going to need to have all of that background to answer that final essay question. Plus, I do say occasionally when I know it's going to connect to either an NWEA test or the air test that this is the kind of question that you might be asked. You've read two stories how are they different and you'll have to come up with evidence so I, I realize these things and I make a point of saying it the vocabulary that comes along with each collection not to mention just the vocabulary that goes with each story so I make sure they get both um, at some point point. and so today's quick question of you know one of the words on your list means something I give the definition they give the word they spell it and we move on it's a quick check um, it, Doing something like that I know helps the students that are still feeling a little unsure because they're 
hearing it a different way versus reading it straight off a of paper. Or I know that I try to add a little bit of humor every once in a while because I know that that's how some of them learn or they get out of the shock of something that's uncomfortable. So, I mean, one of our words is onomatopoeia. And it's a fun word to say and it's a fun word to play with. And they know it as me making funny noises that are onomatopoeias. And um, if you recall from class, the girl that spelled onomatopoeia is a lower level student. She spelled that what I would consider one of the hardest words on that list, no problem. Because something that I'm doing with her with this, she's connecting to that maybe one of the higher level students is already passed. But it doesn't matter because they're still getting something out of it. If they participate, there's something in it for them. Right. If they pay attention, there's yeah. something in it for them. We're towards the end of the school year and at the point where we got the Chromebooks, all the testing began, so it was hard to reserve them. But I do always have, if, the stories are always connected to the online. So if, if it's a, there as an online textbook, I pull up the student version so they see what's in their textbook on the screen. I, of course, have my textbook right in front of me so I know what I'm looking for. Um, but I always have it and I always use the, the highlighting or the underlining techniques. Um, I can't physically write on the board because it doesn't work that way, but I repeat myself constantly so they can hear what I need to say. Or I, I, I always let them check with a neighbor if it's something that's a little bit more long-winded. I don't, I don't say to them, no, you can't talk to your neighbor because that's defeating the purpose of a discussion. So. Exactly. Yeah refined my ways of management over the course of so many years. What works for one kid doesn't always work for another, and I think we all know that. Um, but I, you need to have some reward system because otherwise the same four students are going to have their hands up in the air because they just want to say something. Right or wrong, they always want to say something. So right. So I, turned it, I tried to turn it into something a little bit more beneficial to me as well because I know that I need them to teach. I mean, I could teach to an empty room, but it's not going to do anything. I could teach to a bunch of blank stairs, and it's not going to do anything. I need them to interact. So I incorporated this reward system of a ticket. I, you know, tickets that you would get at a um, what raffle or something. You can find them anywhere. I put my initial on them because I know a couple other teachers use that, so I distinguish between them. Um, but anything that they say in class that is a positive contribution to class earns them a ticket. Even if they're off, or if they're slightly wrong, or not quite on target with what I'm saying, I give them the ticket. Um, if they attempted to say something and didn't quite hit the mark, they still get a ticket. If they're working with the vocabulary and they got it, but they didn't get the spelling right, they get a ticket. Like they, they, everything, Every time they put their hand up, I call on them, they read. And they're willing to put themselves out there for that, I give them a ticket. So in the long run, the tickets work out for their advantage. They can buy candy or, which is usually just mints and Tootsie Pops or something like that. Um, I do have bigger prizes for the end of the school year that some of them have been accumulating. Um, and that's on me to do as a reward. Um, I also, you asked about the content in, in that. I, I like what I do, and so I get into it, and I, I honestly can't help myself. So the stories from this series, this collection series, are good stories. There are actually a couple of stories that ended, and my students were mad that the story ended, and they didn't get the ending that they wanted or were waiting for, and they asked, was there more? And I saw them turning pages like, we're going to keep reading, right? There's more to the story. And they get upset that it stops because it's good. They get sucked into it. So knowing that and knowing that it plays into where they are right now in their lives, it works out for everybody. I know that they don't always want to hear my voice because I'm their teacher and I'm the adult and they want to do something with their friends. So I find ways to get partner work in or buddy work in or group work in in some way. Um, even if it's just writing sentences for vocabulary words, I let them work with a friend. And if they have the same exact sentence, that's fine. But they're both working and they're both using it. When we get into the story and we find the words that pop up in the story and we can look for context clues, finding context clues is easier than finding definition because you don't have to have a set specific way to say something. But one word will work. And if you can find one word that kind of resembles that def definition that you know of is out there, then the lower student can succeed in that. And then later, when we put it into our um, assessment, the performance assessment, there's always a connection to the vocabulary, the word choice, or something that comes up in the story. So 
they're always forced to go back and look at the story and what they used. So there's always, there's always a connection to how they're using the vocabulary, even if they're not aware of the fact that they put the word hover into their sentence. They know what it means by the end of it because it's come up so many times. Depending on the story that we're reading, I take it one step further. I make a discussion out of it, and I put discussion questions on myself, out myself, and I form what I call a small group study group, and they have four or five questions to go through, and then they discuss something that might be trivial, but it's still provoking thoughts and opinions, and then they get into it, and so everybody has to participate. And looking at the responses later, after they've written down that their, what their comments were, I can see that the ones that are lower level, that I've placed within a, higher, a group with somebody that's also higher level that can help teach it, they kind of rise to the occasion because they're hearing their peers. They might be saying the same words and they might know what they mean to an extent, but at least they're saying them and they're recognizing them because I know they come up later on something like the NWA or the air test because they're going to have vocabulary that they don't understand, but they at least know how to learn it and how to figure it out. Well, I started off, I say, you know, the day before we read such and such a story and this is who it was about. I usually hit the top, the main parts of main character and this was the problem. And then I have the students help me fill in the blanks or sometimes I try to trick them and I say, you know, like, oh, this is what happened and they tell me no, 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 and they correct me. So I do it a couple different ways. Today it was pretty straightforward. Perseus had to go off and do this mission because Polydectes was angry and he made him do something that seemed impossible and he went about doing it, but he had some help and he had some tools. And I say things like the word tools or, you know, assistance, and that helps to spike a reaction from a student so they're ready with what they know of as you know well he had a sword and he had a helmet and he had a shield and he had the wings sandals and so all of that is also a way for me to check that yesterday wasn't a waste of time and that they caught on to yesterday and so I can move forward with today. I know I need to check and look at it every once in a while but I mean I've done my homework myself I know that I can't go into this without reading it myself or knowing what I'm going to have to ask so it's it becomes natural after you get into it, and if you've done it enough times or even within the course of one year, you get one collection under your belt, you move on to the next one, and it, the process itself becomes easier, so you know what's coming. I also make a point of getting into their space. I wander the room a lot. I use that as a behavior management, but I also use it as a, like, I'm getting into it, so I want them to get into it. And if I put my hands on their book and say, you know, oh, like, when we read about it here, remember on page you know, whatever, it said this one little clue for us and this is what we marked on yesterday, they're already all looking back in the book because they've gotten their attention and so we move on and I use, I use everything around within the room, the book, the students, my own comments, whatever's up on the board to get them back on track. So if it's only meant to just review from one story to the next, it doesn't, it's not effective. It, they need to have a connection for why we're doing it in the first place. So. I knew going into this second half of the story that they needed to remember what happened before in order for this story for today to make sense. So a review was necessary. It also built up a lot of um, momentum because by the time we got to the end of that poem, there were so many thoughts on how it could have ended or why didn't it happen this way or there are a lot of questions that the students asked that connected from the first story. I mean, they were answering the short response question before I asked them to answer it and they didn't realize that, but I knew because that's how I worded my questioning. I think like this. I think I need a plan of some kind, but when I'm able to use the resources at my disposable how I want to, then it works for me. It was me being a brand new teacher and I was told you have to use this textbook, figure it out, and there was no guidance, it would be a struggle because when you're brand new it's hard to figure out what is important and what isn't and you stick to the standards more than anything because you're afraid to deviate from what you need to accomplish. The outline on SIS tells you as it's based basically a skeleton structure of what to do, but it's also in the book of what to do. If you're, if you're using your manual the right way, you can isolate what you want to use. So if I was being told by either you or by a veteran teacher that kind of sees the value in certain stories, I would like to see that. I would like to see why you should pick each story. So pick this one because it will help connect to that performance assessment, or pick this one because it's lighthearted and it could be a, a break if you needed something a little less 
um, intense for a particular week or de depending on the day or depending on the class. Um, I chose not to read a, um, in Collection 5, I chose not to read the one about the two stories about um, Flight 93 from the 9-11. I chose not to read it because I didn't like the story. I didn't like the emotions that would be pulled out. And I knew that my students are over-emotional. And so going with something that's going to make them upset is not going to help me in any way. So I skipped it on purpose. Sure. But knowing that as a first-year teacher might be helpful. So a note in CIS or maybe being able to work one-on-one -on -one with pairing up a less experienced teacher with a more experienced teacher, that might help.